Well, I, I'm a big supporter of education and I love to read. And uh, when I was a, a young student, the library was a place where everybody would meet and they had all the books there and they had all the materials, videos. And so when I came here, which was in 2015, the library was almost totally empty. And I thought, well, I have a lot of books that I brought with me. So if I donate them, then I can check them out if I need them and other people can see them as well. And I had uh, a lot of movies. So uh, when I teach in my course, which is a media class, uh, I use a lot of pieces of video. So in education, whenever you use, like say a part of a movie, you have to be legitimate about it. You have to buy the movie so you have the item that you paid for, that way you're allowed to use it. And so I have many movies that I had over the years gathered up. And so I thought, well, I'll donate them to the library. So that way other people will have the benefit of this material, which I think is so important. So I think that that's why I started. Well, there's, there's a lot of, it's an interesting thing. There's a generational divide. Uh, older people think that certain films and certain programs are wonderful. Young people, they don't know about them. And so I think if we can connect with that, like for example, in my classes, I like to talk about famous people like Charlie Chaplin. I have all of Charlie Chaplin's movies. And even today, young people have heard of Charlie Chaplin but they haven't seen his films. So that's a wonderful opportunity to show them the movie. And they think they're wonderful as well. But also in American culture, people like Jimi Hendrix, who's a very famous performer. Most people have never seen him perform. I have many of his concerts on DVD. And I just think that if I can expose people to these performers, it just enriches their lives. And so it makes them happy, it makes me happy. It's just a wonderful thing. Well, <clears throat> it's an interesting thing because uh, I, I do these donations for my own interests. But for many people, um, uh, showing them appreciation encourages them to do the same thing. So uh, if, you, if you make a, a public announcement about your gratitude to someone like me or somebody else, it, it encourages others to follow their example. And I think this is important. We want to lead by example. Everybody learns from what, what the rest of us do. And so if I do things that are good and they agree, then they per will perhaps do the same thing themselves. And so that's, you're, you're improving the environment of the campus. That's what I want to do. Uh, I have seen the banners around campus. So I knew about the book donation event polls. And what is happened in my case was that I opened a Spanish language lab here at the University of Utah. And as part of the opening ceremony, I did a book drive looking for books in Spanish or about Spanish speaking world. And what did happen is some of the members of the community reach out to me saying, I have a lot of books. I want to get rid of those books because I'm going back to my country. Uh, but I would like to make some use of those books. They are not about Spanish. They are not about any Spanish speaking country. Would you be interested in them? And I told these people, uh, actually, my library has this book donation event. So I could go pick up the books and, and make all the, not effort, but go pick up the books, uh, bring them to the to campus, bring them to the library for you, if that's what you want. And they said, sure. And it was like, why not, right? We can uh, not waste those books. Uh, we can use them for our students because some of those books were really specialized really good for business, economics, communication. So it was like, wow, my students would love to be able to access these books. Please let me give them to the library so that uh, my students, all the students, all the community can have access to them.
for me, the library is not only a place where you can go work or you can read books, but it's also a way to create community. And that's why I decided to do the books, to donate the books. That's why uh, I always encourage my students. Um, there are books in English, so you can go practice your English. You can read the same book as your friend and you can discuss it. So I think the library is a way to create community, not only uh, among the IGC universities, but it could be like brother, like in Songdo, like the whole community. And I think that's something that we need to foster more. And, and I think that's the thing I like the most about the library and the work you do. Uh, what I would tell others is exactly what I just said. Mm -hmm. Like the library is not just a place with books, it's a place that helps us create community. So if you are looking even to meet people, uh, you can go and see someone reading a book you like. It can be a way to start communicating with someone new. Then I would encourage them like, go, you will find really good books, really useful books, but also it can help you create community. And what I would actually recommend is that the, the library tries to reach more to the community, not just IGC, not just students, not just faculty. I think if people knew uh, what we can offer, more people even from outside of IGC would be interested in coming, joining, participating in, in the library life and the community can be. Uh, thank you. Uh, when I first learned of your book donation program, I uh, thought about my own future because I will, at some point, I'll step down completely from uh, teaching and research. But I had already stepped down from administrative responsibilities as vice president for academic affairs for three years, and then for four years I was chair of the department. So I had a small collection of books here, and I wondered uh, what would be the best thing uh, to do with them. And globally, the digitalization of academic publication and libraries was well underway, so I didn't really need the collection of print books. That was one reason. And um, perhaps the more important reason is that a lot of my research over the years has focused on uh, Korea in one way or another. And finally, the most important reason is that uh, I was introduced by a Yonsei, Yonsei University colleague to Dr. Oh Myung way back in 1991. And that led to, with his help, I was funded by Daycom Corporation and wrote a book myself titled The Telecommunications Revolution in Korea. It was published by Oxford. And uh, it dealt mainly with the 1980s, in which Dr. Oh played a very important role as uh, in the Blue House and then subsequently as the youngest vice minister ever in the Ministry of Communications and minister at the time of the Seoul Olympics. So um, those are some of the main reasons why the book donation program was um, attractive to me. But a little more background may be of interest to people who see parts of this interview. Uh, I came to Korea at age 23 as a Peace Corps volunteer. And um, then I went back and the Korea Peace Corps experience, I taught English at Gangwon National University for two years. That actually helped get me admitted into a PhD program at Stanford University because they had a AID funded program in communication that was mass media for national development. So I did the PhD at Stanford with a Stanford University graduate fellowship and then started teaching in the US. It wasn't until uh, 1985, 86 academic year that I returned to Korea again as a senior Fulbright scholar at, at Yonsei University. And that was 85, 86. Everybody was talking about the 1988 Seoul Olympics. And, uh, and so I got involved in research on the Seoul Olympics um, and attended a number of con academic conferences here and internationally and wrote a number of papers and co-authored books with both uh, Korean and international authors. Uh, then. The next critical point in my academic career was in uh, 
two, in, let's see, uh, in 1991, 1991, a Yonsei University colleague, Professor Che Jung Ho, introduced me personally to Dr. Oh, and, and I met him. Uh, he was then chairman of the Taejun Expo Organizing Committee. And they had offices in COEX in Seoul because the Taejun Expo didn't occur until 2003. But at, that meeting went well. And with Dr. Oh's help, I began researching and I wrote my book published by Oxford University Press called The Telecommunications Revolution. Uh, and then I was working also in Korea for the next number of years at the Fulbright Commission. I didn't have much contact with Dr. O oh until 2008. I was thinking of writing a second edition of the Telecommunications Revolution in Korea because so much had happened uh, between the time I wrote that book, it was published in 1995, and 2008. Um, but Oxford University Press did not think there was a market for the book. So when I told Dr. O oh this, he was at that time president of Konguk University. We met face to face in his office. And I said to him, uh, OUP doesn't think there's a market for this book. His reply, I still vividly remember, was, but Dr. Larson, developing countries are very interested in this topic. He had just returned from a trip to Colombia and one other Latin American country. And indeed, they were very interested in Korea's digital experience. And to this day, 2023, developing countries throughout uh, the world continue to be very, very interested. So the, the whole field has, has grown. But at that meeting at Konguk University, I asked Dr. Rowe, should we co-author a book? He looked at me and said, without hesitation, why not? And that was the start of a remarkable experience. Digital development in Korea, which has gone into a second edition published in um, 2020, uh, this book is genuinely authored by Oh Myung as the first author, but I gained a tremendous amount of insight into this uh, digital development and the role of ICT in, in Korean, Korea's development. And along the way, uh, Dr. Oh has been uh, inducted into the Stony Brook University College of Engineering and Applied Science Hall of Fame. Uh, he is widely considered to be the godfather of Korea's IT revolution. And so when the opportunity to donate my small collection of books came, I thought, of course I should do that because uh, it, does, it relates in a, in a small but hopefully important way to his larger uh, donation. And it's in your library. So I think this is wonderful, a wonderful opportunity um, uh, for me. And by the way, Dr. O was the first inductee into the Stony Brook University uh, CES Hall of Fame. The second inductee is the longtime president of Stanford University, uh, John Hennessy. So um, Dr. O's stature has gone far beyond Korea itself, although he's highly respected uh, here. OK, uh, I think the recent remodeling of the IGC library showing that you understand the important role of digital in the future of the library. That interests me most. And uh, I, I should have mentioned earlier, um, Dr. O oh is the founding president of uh, SUNY Korea, the founder of SUNY Korea, really. But more than that, he, in his service in four different ministries under four uh, presidential administrations here in Korea, uh, he served as minister of construction. And then in the next, uh, the new presidency, minister of construction and transportation at a time when critical decisions were made about the Incheon Airport and Songdo. So he's really a force behind this entire global campus and, and the city of the new city of uh, Songdo, not just uh, SUNY Korea. And, uh, but as for SUNY Korea, five of the six departments in SUNY Korea from Stony, the Stony Brook side of SUNY Korea are in the College of uh, Engineering and Applied Sciences. Only the business school, business management, is outside CEAS. So what I envision in terms of content for the future is to continue to, um, to write and uh, participate intellectually in work on understanding the, the digital revolution. And I would like to, personally, uh, there's been discussion about making 
Dr. O's donation or that space over above the uh, library into a kind of policy museum. And recently the faculty of uh, SUNY Korea had an outing to the East Coast and we visited the Edison Museum. There's a museum there that contains uh, everything from electric cars to electric light bulbs, all the inventions of Thomas Edison. It's one of, I believe, four uh, of the largest uh, Edison museums in the world. And he was the founder of General Electric. Um, anyway, we learned on that visit that that museum will be moved to Songdo. And uh, I have thought that this um, collection of Dr. O's personal books that document his journey uh, across decades, over four ministries. And also Dr. O served as president of two different universities. He served on um, the board of directors and as president of uh, several uh, businesses, large businesses, including the Donga Ilbo newspaper here. So if there were anywhere in the world to host a policy museum, you know, using video, using uh, digital material to document it, I think it would be right here in Songdo and in the Incheon Global Campus. So that's what my dream or, or kind of hope for the future uh, would be. Yes, well, um, as you know, there's a great deal of interest around the world now in K-pop, K-food, uh, K almost everything. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, I think any kind of steps to move into the, the digital age uh, w would be good. Um, books, to use the books example, I have authored or co-authored a number of books over my career. But in about 2002 or 2003, I was working for the Fulbright Commission. And at that point, I took four books across the street to DHL and shipped them to Google. Google scanned my books, and so they've been available full text on the internet through Google, Google Books uh, for many years now. And so I would hope that uh, more of that kind of sharing, not only of books, but of um, academic articles, but also uh, video materials, let's say conference proceedings, that this could become a place, in talking to potential colleagues, uh, people to come here and study, I would say uh, this has been, from the start, the Incheon Global Campus, but in particular um, SUNY Korea, has been a perfect base for which scholars from anywhere in the world could come here to study as students at different levels, undergraduate, um, professional level of master's degree offerings or PhD. Um, and having access to the library, to the donations of Dr. O oh and the ones, uh, the small donations I've made along with many others, I think will really augment that possibility. Yeah.